All right, guys, we're live, and forgive me, I'm going to fix this. Somebody was DMing me on how to fix the Wi-Fi signal so that it doesn't look so pixelated. So forgive me for now, but I'm working on it to make the streams look more clear. But with that said, let's just get right on to the information as you guys are chiming in to this broadcast. So I thought I would talk about the dreaded subject of fat loss and not call it weight loss because there is a difference. You can lose yourself. So hi everyone, as you guys are coming in, uh, Subplex 101. Okay, so I thought I would talk about uh, these subjects that people tend to get all hyped about, but really I like the subjects of thyroid, adrenals, DHEA, the quality of food more than fat loss. I just find that to be so boring. But I thought I would just kind of hit it really quick and then get to the meat. What's up, everyone? Bonjour. So with that said, you can either drop on a keto diet or you can gain some fat. And I, I don't think that a lot of people talk about this enough, that people are just shocked. They're shook. Again, for the replay people, forgive me for the pixelated Wi-Fi. It looks clear as day on my phone. I wish it would be this clear on the replay, but... I'm shook on how people are shocked that they are gaining weight on keto. They're like, oh my god, I thought I was supposed to lose weight. So these types of um, misnomers and misinformation is the reason why keto will crash. And then I'll be here always to pick up the pieces. So uh, yeah, don't forget to like up the stream, y'all. Don't forget. So, um, essentially, I'll go into the two ways. What's up, Deborah? My mod's in the house. I'm going to go into the two ways that you could either gain fat or lose fat. So, I have this keto course page, and I do, the people on that page, it's amazing. But they're kind of my guinea pigs, I'm not going to lie. So, I've been coaching people for years, and I got a lot of da data for that. And Deborah's reminding you guys to like up the stream, collapse the window in the left, no, right corner. And it'll collapse and then you can like it up you'll see a thumb and then you'll see a chat and you can re-enter the stream but with that said with coaching people throughout the years and I mean this is thousands of people now because I started way before keto was trendy so I was able to really learn a lot which is the reason why I took away a lot of inflammatory foods like cheese like nuts and like caffeine but what I didn't realize was that plants and even some meats can have an inflammatory response in people trying to do keto if you fracked up before you start the diet lifestyle. And so I didn't understand that you really have to look at everything that sticks that you stick in your mouth, irregardless of what diet you're going to be eating. So with that said, uh, now that I'm doing the course and continuing to uh, do consultations, I am learning so much more. So you guys know that I was originally writing a book and I put a halt on that because there's so much more that I've learned that I essentially had to scrap and create a whole new book. I also include, am including recipes that everything has to be um, deconstructed and explained. Thank you so much, Alex Speaks UP. Thank you who writes, uh, thanks Stephanie, always great content, people need to know. Thank you, Alex. I really appreciate that you donated to the Super Chat, that's awesome. Thank you. So with that said, uh, people need to know the difference. Now, one of the biggest problems with people doing whatever diet is their deficiencies. They have vitamin deficiencies, they have mineral deficiencies, and so therefore, this very interesting system gets out of whack. We have a propensity to swell up in a lot of inflammation, i.e. water. And a lot of you guys don't really know the difference between having issues with your lymphatic system, lymphatic drainage, estrogen dominance, which can also make you swell up in a lot of water. Having a histamine response to certain food or eating mono foods can make you just swell up the fact that you guys have a potassium and sodium balance will also make you swell up like a balloon and then people don't think in this context they go and step on a scale and they're a mess 
they're a mess. They're a freaking hot mess. Some people have the MTHR gene mutation. They have a very difficult time to get their folic acid and methylfolate, folate, especially from foods. And then you guys are eating frozen vegetables, which is very hard to get folate from frozen vegetables. You guys are juicing vegetables and it's very, very difficult to get folic acid from juiced vegetables. So hence the inflammatory response when people do keto and they often eat mono food. So they're just eating the same things every day because they don't understand how to do the dang thing, which is why I do these streams. So for me, I'm always learning. Like I said, I started off with cheese, nuts, and caffeine and people are like, what's so wrong with cheese? I still get the, I'm always surprised because if you guys go way back to my first videos, I'm talking about the inflammatory response from the casein in cheese, which there is more casein and whey in cheese than there is in butter. And you cannot drink milk and sour cream and cottage cheese. So I don't know why people are still doing that. But the point is, is that you guys often, and you can gain fat weight, but I really want to deconstruct the difference between water weight gain on a keto protocol and fat weight gain on a keto protocol and it is a lot of little moving parts to understand. So people do keto, they might initially have a water drop, but they don't actually really drop the fat. And then they're like, oh my God, I just dropped 10 pounds or 18 pounds. And then focus, you stupid phone. Um, then people start, like they just start going up in weight like this. On keto and then people become very confused do I continue I mean I feel better I mean my sleep is better all these things are better but I just I'm tighter in all my clothing so then we've got to go and deconstruct every individual person are you estrogen dominant are you sleeping at night because if you're not sleeping I need to turn on some lights or else this focus is gonna go crazy sorry y'all that'll help for now and I want to do a quick stream so, as you guys know, I don't become too explo exposed. Is that a word? I think it's exposed to too much <laughs> blue light. So, this is the reason why I thought I'd do the stream. I'm talking about different angles of keto that people don't talk about because all these people are just talking about autophagy and intermittent fasting. And it's so interesting to watch the actual ridiculous trends, right? One minute, they call it bulletproof coffee. Then Dave Ashbury, I don't know where he goes. And then people are calling it butter coffee. And then people start intermittent fasting and dry fasting and snake diets and then the carnivore diet. And we have to really understand these trends that we're jumping on to make sure that we aren't creating more damage within the body. So I'm here to start talking about what's going on with your body's current health and why you might be gaining fat or fat water or losing weight on a keto protocol so uh a lot of you guys have a poor lymphatic system systems often due to sitting at a desk all day so you don't have enough upper trunk circulation and so people are doing a lot of dry brushing i forgot my dry brush which i don't sit at a desk I actually stand too much but you can use a dry brush to try to get the reservoirs in your body to start moving, right? Because if you're sitting all the time, blood's not moving. And uh, another big problem of sitting on a desk while trying to do a keto diet is that the um, gallbladder is just getting trapping a lot of estrogen in it from not, a, not enough upper trunk circulation. And so a lot of women and some men develop stones, sludge, and then when you try to do a keto diet, it's not working. So we really have to distinguish the two between, between losing fat and gaining fat. So I'll get into your guys' uh, comments, but I literally can't say anything right now unless I get closer to the phone. So I really want you guys to understand that if you're gaining a lot of weight rapidly on keto, most likely it is not fat. Now, I'm pretty sure that you're gaining some fat. Now, the reasons why you might gain fat on keto, and here's the problem. A lot of you are not eating enough fat. You're eating a lot of protein because you're afraid of fat. 
And so when you're not eating enough fat and the right types of fat and the quality of animal fat and you're eating too much protein and you've got low stomach acid, which most of us have through stress and other factors, you guys are on proton pumps and all having acid reflux, not eating enough red meat and this drops, drops your HCL levels, coffee, all this weird stuff. You guys have low HCL levels in your stomach. You're pounding down the protein and what your body can't break down and utilize, break down into amino acids that insulin can use, you convert it into glucose. And that's just the way it is. So if you don't trust me, just go get a glucometer and test. And there in front of your face, you're gonna go, oh wow, Steph was right. So with that said, if your blood sugar starts to spike, now you already have dysregulated blood sugar before you ever do keto. Then you do keto, you don't eat enough fat, you're eating too much protein, and the body just doesn't know how to utilize ketones that are either made or you're just not making enough ketones. So the blood sugar is like this, boom, 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 which I've explained before. And when the blood sugar is spiking up, it, you're not going to use a lot of those ketones. Now you will use some, but you're not going to use a lot of those ketones. So that's why some people still have the symptoms of adrenal fatigue, right? Adrenal issues inverted cortisol, where your cortisol is high at night and low in the morning, hyperglycemia, and also thyroid issues, right? Issues with your thyroid stimulating hormone or your T3 commonly. When you do keto, you guys exacerbate the problem and it just becomes more inflamed. All these issues become more, just more. So if your T3 begins to drop, you're not going to lose any weight. You're not going to access any fat. You're not. If you're not sleeping well because your cortisol is inver inverted, you can become insulin resistant overnight and you're not going to burn ketones. You're going to store more fat really than you're actually burning, right? You're not going to utilize ketones. Uh, if your insulin is too high due to high blood sugar, due to insulin resistance in the night because you're not getting into the fifth level of sleep or getting into deep sleep REM sleep. Uh, and then there's the day stress. And when I, I every time I do consultations and when I do follow-ups, it's very interesting because I'll literally tell people what they need to consider to apply to a ketogenic lifestyle, and they do 70% of it. And I said, you can't do 70% of something and, and expect 100% result. So I had a woman today, very lovely, but I told her she needed to stop running for the short term because she had adrenal issues. Um, she had adrenal issues, severe, tired. So let's, let's give your body a break. You're an, you're an A type, you're a go, go, go person. You don't give enough, there's not enough ebb and flow. There's not enough, um, sorry, um, there's not enough uh, sympathetic, there's more parasympathetic and too much nervous system stimulation. So I was like, why don't you just stop running for the moment and take a walk? Like just take a nice, you know, thought provocative, lovely walk instead of running in the morning. And she was also working to the very last moment that she would go to sleep. And I was like, well, how long is it taking you, take you to fall asleep? And she was like, oh, 15, 20 minutes. And I'm like, okay, people, you always have to shave up or shave down numbers. And I was like, okay, so that's, that's 15 to 30 minutes. And it should literally take you about five to eight minutes to fall asleep if your adrenals are functioning properly. You sort of just drift into sleep. If you are falling asleep in two seconds, that's adrenal fatigue. And then therefore you're gonna have a dysregulated blood sugar through the night. And this dysregulated blood sugar can create estrogen dominance, problems with your lymphatic system, and you can also store fat. So people gaining fat on keto have their blood sugar really high. Now, often you guys have high blood sugar before you even do keto. You don't know it at all. You had no clue. And uh, you have poor sleep, you have stress, you have like, you know, exposure to pesticides and preservatives and plastics and glyphosate and all this stuff. Uh, and, and so your blood sugar and alcohol, blood sugar is dysregulated, do keto, and it becomes even more like this. So you start to have health issues on a ketogenic protocol. So I'm, I'm calling it out that the ketogenic trend will die because people will not see the results that they want to see. Because to actually access fat and leave your fantastic muscle alone that takes some work, 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 you need to work for it. And doing this half-ass diet is not going to work. 
eating whatever you want is not going to work. Eating fruit on a ketogenic protocol that have that has fructose is not going to work, right? So avocado is not going to have fructose. It's fruit. Uh, with that said, I've been talking a lot about gut issues. So if you have a dysbiotic gut and SIBO, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be just your lymphatic system is going to be a hot mess. So you have to work on like five things at once while doing keto or a keto carnivore thing. You have to. I just see, preach, Miss Stephanie. Sandy says, preach, girl. So that's what I'm here for. And I've been taking um, in the idea that I'm going to create a low carb, high fat protocol that leads you into keto. Now you can stay in this low carb, high fat arena, uh, or you can go full keto. No, both can help to fix your health issues because we all come with them. So on my um, Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic, I was talking a lot about uh, this candida problem, which is another thing you have to address. The way you try to get rid of candida has to be done very carefully because if you just cut out the carbs and you've got a super massive chronic candida albicin infection, it can potentially make it grow more. You know, there's just certain things that you have to do like stress and heat and these things can make the candida albicans can grow more on a low carb diet. Um, so I'm going to create like a, a low carb to keto. And if you want to stay at low carb, you can. And if you want to go full keto where I sit and I literally anti-age, as you guys can see over time with me doing keto, that it is just, and I, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a sports bra all the time and I'm only doing that to catalog my, um, my body on keto. I have not refed on carbs ever. No alcohol, no nuts, no cheese, nothing. I even cut out stevia. I cut it all out. Not Now, you can't do sugar alcohols and xylitol, but you can do stevia if it's pure stevia extract, if you don't react to it. But I even cut that out because I just want to be the purest form of keto, and I want to see what happens to my body. Ah, uh, thank you. Is it Greek for, for gamer? Thank you. Uh, and then thyroid function tanked. Okay, so... Xavier was saying he was doing keto for a long time and it was great and then my thyroid function tanked. Now here's the thing. When I talk to people in consultations, you cannot pull the wool over this 51 year old eyes. You cannot. Like, I've just been on the planet too long and a lot of people who know me, I really, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, there's like military planes outside my window. Dang, that's crazy. Easy. Okay, sorry. Um, I've been around long enough to catch people in their in their bull crap. You know, I try to explain to my millennial friends. I, I'm a person who talks to people. I can't do surface talking. I, I can't. If I speak surfacey to anyone, it's because either I've got like five seconds and I gotta run, or I just don't like you that much. I find you interesting because if I find you interesting, we're going to talk. So if you're that type of person, and I, you guys know as a professional skater, a lot of you guys know, and I've lived in Europe, and that's the reason why I speak Swedish, and I lived in Holland. I rented apartments and traveled and ended up traveling around the world and all these places as a skateboarder and then as a full-grown adulting person. Well, I'm not quite an adult. I still have some stages before People are like, I want to grow up and be just like you. And I'm like, well, I'm not grown up yet. So you got a ways to go. Uh, so I'll get into the fats and I'll get into your guys' questions. I just wanted to preface the difference. Why you guys are gaining fat is typically because you're having issues with your electrolytes. So if it's water, or okay, if you're gaining fat fats, it's insulin, it's estrogen, and it's stress and poor sleep. And it's one of those. And that's the end of it, right? You're having problems with your insulin. You're having problems with your blood sugar which is insulin and blood sugar is connected. You're having problems or your leptin signaling. 
you're having problems with your sleep, which, which creates issues with your leptin sig signaling, or your thyroid. Oh, sorry, I just realized a few more. So a lot of people have underlying thyroid issues on a keto diet, and they do keto. And this is where, I don't know how many bodybuilder channels I go to, and they're like, it's simple. You guys want to lose weight? It's calories in and calories out, and you will lose weight. And I'm like, what freaking dumb, dumb planet are you on to not consider metabolic derangement? inflexibility because the thyroid will really put a halt on you being able to drop body fat it's just not gonna happen sure you can you can drop weight right you can lose muscle and you can make yourself sick right you can have your blood pressure drop but eating not drinking enough water and not having enough sodium and then having your blood pressure drop uh, but nine times out of ten if you have an underlying uh, metabolic problem and y'all and I'm sorry men you're becoming estrogen dominant too and if you're aromatizing you're not gonna lose fat weight like yo guys it's not gonna come off I don't care how much cardio you do I don't care how much hit training you do I don't care if you're at a caloric deficit this ain't coming off and women this ain't coming off I don't care how much how much dietary restriction you do women you are not you all gotta you guys have to see this trip me out. You see this? Wait. You see those military plans? I have to show this. I know I'm digressing. Where are they? Look at that. Look at that. That's a trip. Okay. I just want to let, let you guys see why I was so distracted. Let's get this back to normal. Will it go back? Nope. Okay, screwed up. Darn it, stupid thing. Sorry, guys. I don't want to... Oh, do I have to stand this far back? Oh, my phone. I hate this phone. Okay, maybe I'll take some of your guys' questions here as I try to fix my phone. Okay, so not to have mold. Yes, phytates. I was doing keto and worked well for years, and then my thyroid function tanked. I changed the light environment. Oh, okay, blue block, blue blocker lights. Got morning, months, sun, sun, and now I can do keto just fine. Okay, perfect, Xavier. Oh, I hate this phone. Seriously? Okay, guys, I'm going to try to fix this. There it goes. Oh, Lord have mercy. Jeez. Um, okay, I need to... Let's see. I need to use dry brush because I'm... What is it? Para, oh, you're paraplegic. Yeah. So, Gina, that would be a great idea. Also, I don't know if you're swimming or if you're just chair dancing like you know any type of movement is also going to help are you a fan of jack cruz or he's not to be trusted i think that jack cruz might have some you know decent information but you know he seems uh, i haven't followed jack cruz in a long time so i couldn't reference what he's been saying lately but I find him to be unhealthy myself. So he looks very unhealthy. Let's, I'll just leave it at that. You can fix your malabsorption. I wouldn't be able to, yeah, I don't, didn't know how to be fat adapted. Okay, so when you're malabsorptive, it's typically because you guys, so is that a new brand of yogurt? I got acne, no, don't eat yogurt. No, that's not keto proof. And even keep, and if you're having problems with the yogurt, is there sugar in it? And also you can have a dysbiotic gut and have a, a, a histamine response from any fermented foods. Kombucha, sauerkraut, kefir can make your, uh, the explosion of your candida go crazy on fermented foods. So be very, very careful. Fermented foods in the past was essentially okay because they didn't have dysbiotic guts before 
antibiotics came in like in the 1930s I believe is when antibiotics came around before they still use colloidal silver and although antibiotics have been great with infections and surgeries and this and that for the common colds and flus and aches and pains it's absolutely destroyed our bodies so can you explain the success people who have camp training with low fat low calorie lifestyles it's just astounding yes exactly Gina it is very astounding but you know people drink their own kool-aid and that's why i always say to people like i go against the grain everybody's like keto is the best ever yes it is if it's done right if it's not right that's the only person who really should not be doing it you know some people have some gene mutations that can't metabolize fat that's very rare but for the most of this most of society i could be just like do keto do keto do keto you know, wait for the dollar dollar bills to start raining all over my head, but, and start talking about fat loss and talk about how easy it is and drink some butter or coffee and let's start intermittent fasting groups and all this absolute nonsense. I just can't do it. I just know too much by speaking to people. All right, there's 101 people in this stream. How about liking up the stream and bringing some more people to this very humble channel and it helps the YouTube algorithm. So, and I'm trying to answer questions and hit you with uh, why we can drop weight and, and uh, which I think I should talk about right now too, is how you fix the gut and how you drop the weight. I have no gallbladder, what's the deal with floating poop? Uh, you're having a floating stool with no gallbladder because the gallbladder is designed to release bile to then break down fat into small molecules that can fit in the blood. So if your body's not getting enough bile because there's no gallbladder, because the bile is made in the liver, if your body's not getting enough bile, then the fat that you're eating is ending up in the toilet and it's not being used, which makes you, makes you, makes it very difficult to absorb your fat soluble vitamins, which people don't understand that vitamins is in fat. That's the main, the fat soluble vitamins is in fatty foods. And if you're trying to get fat soluble vitamins and vegetables, you need to have fat as a transport so your body will absorb it. So you've got to eat fat anyway. But with that said, uh, the leaky gut and the SIBO has to be fixed in many ways. Like you have to just stay away from everything that creates the holes in the gut, right? That's all foods with fungus, that's, which there's lots of foods. Chocolate, dark chocolate, coffee beans, tea bags, white vinegar, rice vinegar. Uh, these things will create an explosion in your gut. Um, Alcohol will destroy the gut wall. Grains will destroy the gut wall. And people who are cross-reactive will react to certain dairies, or all dairy. Uh, some people who have it that bad. Um, antibiotics, pharmaceuticals, birth control pills, like you name it. Pesticides, glyphosate, you know. Cleaners in the house, spray bottles, dyes, colors, like amalgam fillings, mercury fillings, fillings. Freaking, it's crazy how much we can destroy our guts. Proton pumps, <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't end. So uh, with that said, um, you have to stay away from all of that. And all of a sudden you're like, but I'm a go, go, go person. I want stuff in a package and you just you can't eat stuff in a package. You got to make everything from scratch. And then you have to rotate your foods, right? You have to rotate, rotate, rotate. And you have to, um, I mean, I really prefer people eating like liver to have like a good source of vitamin C because that will help kind of rattle the biofilms. Also, some help can be monolaurin, some help can be oregano oil. But if you guys have, here's the thing, you develop leaky gut, holes in the gut wall, small intestine, and then you develop histamine intolerance and diamine oxidase deficiencies. And then you try to do oregano oil and you feel sick. Like you can't win sometimes, but not everybody reacts to oregano oil. That helps to break down potentially the biofilms lower, uh, at least lower the can. And it goes after things like candida albicans because there's many different species of candida fungus, but the one that really is nasty is the stuff that's white tongue, uh, yellow nails, freaking dandruff really bad, itchy skin, itchy bunghole, itchy vaginas, like, what else? I mean, rashes and red spots. It's nasty. 
So when you fix that gut wall, then you become absorptive, right? So not only, that's why they say leaky gut can create a floating stool as well, because you're not taking in your fats, your body's not, uh, not absorbing, all, also low stomach acid, alcohol can do all these things. You're not absorbing your nutrients, and then therefore you don't adapt. Some do, but people at the severity of how bad you have leaky gut or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and if you have SIBO, do not do fermented foods. You will so mess yourself up. All right, so I love liver and tello better. Yes, love, love you. You've been doing keto for three years, all thanks to you. Oh, that's awesome. Carol, thank you. You made it, Juliet. Yes, like up the stream, guys. we got 101 people in the house. I'm going to take your guys' questions. Oh, I just want to also stress that the way that you drop fat on a ketogenic diet is to adapt. So here's the thing. To adapt, you need vitamin D, E, A, and K, right? You need to get folate into your system. You need the balance between zinc and copper. You need the balance between iodine and selenium. You need the balance between sodium, potassium. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. But that's what you have to do. You're not going to adapt. You can't be like all sodium, no potassium. Your electrolytes will be so bad. You can have like leaky gut because you want to absorb the friggin' magnesium that you're that you're putting on your skin and you know taking it in the evening. Um, you've got to have the foods that have and the supplements because if you're not doing a natural zinc and copper balance, you can have copper just you know or people are doing this uh, pharmaceutical based calcium so bad for you, so bad. It's better to get your calcium. Because calcium is good to absorb magnesium. Better to get your, like eat a chicken, eat the whole bones. <laughs> There's your calcium. If you want the benefit, so to drop fat, the body has to be in balance, right? It has to be in homeostasis. If you're not in homeostasis because you're not listening to me, you're just not listening, you're doing like, I'm doing so many things that she says, but you're not doing everything. You're not going to see fat loss. You're not. You're not. You're not. You're just not. We train our fat cells to be freaking lazy, inefficient fat cells, fat cells through different ways, blood sugar dysregulation, estrogen dominance, poor sleep, right? Insulin resistance at night. So everything that makes you store fat, you have to do the opposite, which is go to bed, connect to circadian rhythm, use blue blockers, get enough of your electrolytes in, especially magnesium, potassium, sodium. If you got low blood pressure, you have to get enough water and sodium in, you're not going to adapt, right? You can't just go and buy some glutamate, seal the gut wall, it won't work like that. You can't do collagen powder. You should just forget eat the gristle off a chicken bone. Some oxtail, some chicken feet, some... You guys have to be aware of all these things because if you're inflamed, right? If you're holding onto water, you're not gonna lose weight on a scale on a keto protocol. You're not. So you have to address all these things. Why is it raining when my car is getting buffed, waxed, and detailed? Lucky me. Darn it! It was sunny like two hours ago. Okay, can I lose fat on a keto eating 4,000, 5,000 plus calories? Cal yeah, of course. I mean, it depends on how active you are. I don't know if you're male or woman, female. But 4,000, 5,000, about four, over 400 grams of fat, which I don't know why you would need to eat 400 grams of fat if you're a woman. I mean, that would be for a tall guy. So maybe not. Because at the end of the day, if you're eating way too much fat, then your body can just use, you will store it. Especially if your blood sugar is dysregulated. Can you touch on the carnivore diet, please? Okay. Everybody's on to, no one needs to be doing carnivore if you don't have freaking histamine intolerance or leaky gut. Okay, guys? You don't need to do it at all. So people think they're going to lose weight. on Everybody's like, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. And you're just thirsty to lose weight. It doesn't work like that. If you do the carnivore diet, which is even more restrictive in the context of not eating processed foods or sugars, than the keto diet, it must be keto carnivore, period. And you must have organ meats on a carnivore diet or you're gonna hurt yourself, okay? Here's the problem. Yes, these meats have vitamin C. Yes, these meats have minerals in them. Yes, these meats have fat-soluble fat vitamins in them. Yes, absolutely but there's not enough balance of, a, of them all. And that's the reason why liver, kidney, tongue, uh, yolks 
are, especially if you don't have any problems with digesting yolks, egg yolks. And if you have histamine tolerance, you might, not, might want to switch to duck eggs because people have less of a histamine reaction. If you have issues with your um, the bacteria, the oxylobacter bacteria, if you don't have that, you can't deal with oxalates, spinach, you can't deal with avocado, and this is where you get your potassium from, potassium-rich foods, because you can get potassium from bone marrow, but you also have glutamate, which can give you histamine response. Liver has a, a fair amount of potassium, but it may not be enough potassium if you are potassium deficient. Now, the body doesn't really hold on to a lot of potassium. I think some of it's in the cells and in the blood. But if you're super like uh, mineral deficient, I'm sorry, I clearly don't live in the country. Nature, I'm craving it right about now. <laughs> How do you manage to sleep with the city noise? Actually, the the position of my apartment is away from the street traffic. So you really only hear helicopters, screaming homeless, schizophrenics, and sometimes a party and sirens, party, crazy person, and helicopters and planes. Otherwise, I don't hear the street traffic at all. I hear it zero. Okay, no scores because I'm hearing the exact same thing. Ashley, <laughs> don't say where you are, honey. Let's see here. Y'all making me hungry for chicken liver. I mean, liver is actually really good. I don't understand. I think a lot of it is that we are, people are like, oh my God, it's so slimy. You know, people who've got histamine intolerance so bad, like, and like, they have, IB, oh, IBS too, sorry. Crohn's, Crohn's, IBS, diverticulitis. These are all good carnivore uh, potentials. Uh, people who've got IBS and like, everything comes out of liquid out of their body and they're chronically dehydrated. These people do well, but you have to still rotate your meats and your foods and your fats. You cannot eat mono foods. You can't eat the same food every day, even though it's convenient because you're busy. And I need to drink water. And I, this is a 37 minute stream, which I'm trying to make it shorter. So some people think that, well, if I, if I drop my fat, and I exercise more, then I can drop fat on a keto diet. And I'm like, it won't happen. It's just not, especially if you have underlying T3 problem, it's not gonna happen if you don't sleep well. You're gonna lose muscle because the body loves to go into gluconeogenesis, which is, which is the breakdown of the amino acids. Anything that's essentially a pro protein in the body is gonna be like just, like just ripped out of your body. And then you'll step on a scale and you'll weigh less, but you'll just be skinny fat. And that's not even weigh less. Some people can lower their cal caloric intake beyond measure and still get fatter. Just saying. Been told that melasma was caused by estrogen dominance, therefore I'm concerned about consuming ground flax. What's your take? Um, so I have melasma too, but um, I've had my reproductive hormonal panel and my estrogen is not dominant and my progesterone is really good. So. It's very interesting that I went through this melasma thing too, especially, and I think the, the in, I know, not I think, there, the infrared box I was using, right? I was blasting it on my face every day because I was, I was like, oh, I got this like juve infrared box, so amazing. And I was just like blasting it on my body and <sighs> melasma came out on my skin within like, like literally almost days. People are like, what happened to your skin? And to be honest, it's just skin, people. We gotta think, we gotta dig deeper on the inside. Okay, short afternoon naps, beneficial. Um, I don't need them on a ketotic, being ketotic and on a ketogenic lifestyle. Often people have naps, naps because their blood sugar is dysregulated. So it really depends on the individual, how long, how tired, tired you are, when you eat your meal, how fast you eat your meal. You know, you guys, everything's contextual. 
But I would say in a nutshell, no. You need to nap if your blood sugar drops. Sorry, but it shouldn't be dropping that low to where you would need to take a nap, is what I'm saying. Sorry if I cover this, but the what is it? Per, per, pervasive notion is the one most create deficient. Listen to this body fat. What is your position on this? Oh, you mean it? You trying to sound all smart? You mean a caloric deficit? No, I just explained that. If you have a thyroid problem, right? If you're going into gluconeogenesis, if you're malabsorptive, if you don't sleep well, and you step on a scale and you weigh less, that's not fat. That's your muscle. I mean, I live in LA. You go to any gym and people look horrible. And they're young, millennials. Like, I'm like 25, 26 years older than them. So no, no. If you guys have adrenal insufficiencies, if you have thyroid, high cortisol, and then you're just not gonna eat, if you're gonna intermittent fast and then do a bunch of stuff, trust, you will be munching on some muscle. And once you start munching on, munching on and become catabolic, you start to have health issues, and then you have lymphatic issues, and then you have estrogen dominance, and then all of a sudden the body's just doing some weird stuff. And when you, look, y'all, I don't know how many of you guys follow me who are younger, or who, are, who are millennials, but when you get into your 50s, you know exactly what's going wrong south with your body. Like, it's like you can't hide anymore, right? Like, if you're having wrinkles, you can't hide from it. If you're getting, like, creepy skin, you can't hide from it. If you're having hormonal problems, you can't build muscle if you're aromatizing as men. If you're having issues with estrogen dominance with women, you know, if you're, it, you can't hide. So I'm at an age where I understand what the frack is going on. If you diet, right, if I diet too long and be at a deficit, right, because I go through, okay, I, my fats are probably around 230 grams of fat every single day. And if I drop my fats and if I start dropping things like, let's say, maybe a couple months ago, I shrink. Nope. I have a cousin that looks extremely young, but he eats junk food all the time. So his genes play well. Yeah, well, how old's your cousin? And that's your, that's what you think looks young in your eyes. Yeah. Cause I see young people with bad skin. I can see bro broken blood vessels around the nasal, um, nasal folds. I see uh, where they store their fat. You see? So, I, my eyes see things better than you do, especially living here in a city filled with models and TV people. How do you prevent going into gluconeogenesis on a low carb or no carb lifestyle? Do you refeed? No, I don't refeed ever, ever. The muscle glucose is slightly higher protein at times. No, you know, Stacey, you can't do slightly higher protein. Again, if you start eating protein that your body cannot digest and use, and the quality of protein really matters as well. And if you've got kidney stones or, or uh, crystals, that's a problem to just stop, shove a bunch of... See, the bodybuilder community does not talk about the kidney problems. They just don't. Kidney and thyroid, kidney and thyroid. Um, but uh, um, I've been doing keto for 11 years on not one single refeed ever. But to avoid the pitfalls on a ketogenic or to be ketotic for so long, because people like who I love, I think Chris Kresser is brilliant, some things he has wrong because he doesn't do keto himself. And so his, his uh, ideology is it's um, his idea of science based on what they know, which is too little. So I would love to be the test subject for people who want to research. Somebody's done, because people are like, I've done keto for 15 years. I'm like, but you re refed and you had wine. And you did, I, I haven't at all. And every year you guys see me i used to do videos every single day now i'm trying to do a live stream or a video every other day or every two to three days i'm strictly eating keto hitting the gym weights and cardio not do cardio treadmill keeping my uh around uh, and what 130 or heart rate oh your heart rate around 130 but 
but not losing weight. Yeah, because you're doing cardio, Juan. But I noticed a big change in my body. It's possible that I'm getting muscle. I don't know. I need to know more. But Juan, I mean, don't do cardio. Everyone I know, look at people who are cardio bunnies. They never, ever look shredded. Unless, you know, like a normal person. I don't mean like a fitness person who's doing stuff and taking stuff and taking stuff. I don't mean like that. Uh, let's see here. Juan, do you notice more definition? It could be you're le leaning out and building muscle at the same time. I don't think so, Natalie. I don't. I think, uh, you guys, we need to, you know, this whole I'm losing weight thing, and I told you it's the obsession. Don't believe almost anything on the internet when it comes to fat loss on keto because people are addicted to the attention and, and the accolades from... Oh, you lost weight. That's a fabulous. And you don't want to tell anybody that you had any issues. None of these people tell you what's really going on. They don't tell you what your poop, their poop looks like. They don't tell you if they have migraines. They don't tell you if they have an electrolyte imbalance. They don't tell you if they got aches and pains and thyroid or anything. Or if their testosterone dropped or their estrogen rose. Be very careful with all these people talking about before and after. You know, just be very, very careful with that. Because people will hide. They will hide. Which is the reason why I'm sitting in workout clothes all the time. So you can see I cannot hide what's going on with my body. Like like this. To book a consultation. Deborah's reminding you guys. If you guys want to book a consultation with me. Just go to stephanieperson.com And it's kind of hard to sit there and teach your own horn. But yo. I'm not Holyfield. But I'm the real deal. I've been doing this for a long time and I'm not some woman in my 30s that just went around the block once. Okay, so cardio, Taylor, unfortunately, it, we, we're animals, right? So people will do cardio at the wrong time. You're getting heart rate up. What's, what's happening when you do that? Central nervous system is being uh, um, uh, stimulated. So you need adrenaline for that. And our bodies are adrenaline junkies. So the adrenals sit right there. And they're the size of green peas. They're tiny. And they're pumping out energy that you don't have. So a lot of people have underlying adrenal issues. A lot of people are inflamed. They have gut issues. Right? So if you have, if you have any type of toxicity or issues, these adrenals are constantly trying to pump out cortisol to heal. But you're never healing. The inflammatory response to heal because your body has to get inflamed to heal. I, it's very weird, I know. But uh, focus. But the problem is, is that if you're not sleeping, you're not getting into deep sleep, you're not healing, and then your body's not healing, and then you go do cardio, and then the central nervous system is stimulated even more, and that's when people start to have metabolic problems. Then they're having problems with DHEA, right? They're having problems with. Uh, uh, men, they start to aromatize. Women become estrogen dominant or their progesterone hits the floor. People are exhausted all day long and then their hair starts falling out. So I hope that makes it clear why you shouldn't do cardio. You can do a warm up, you can take a white walk, and you can take a hike. But in, in, as you, if you're doing keto and uh, with Chris Kresser always saying the dangers of a low carb diet, these are the reasons why people have problems because they try to do super, super human and eat cheese and eat garbage and drink coffee and intermittent fast and then go take a hike and work and all this kind of stuff and then their 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 uh, health tanks their immune system tanks how about doing spin class same thing Taylor that's a problem why would you do spin class you don't you're not gonna burn fat you're gonna burn your muscle if your body's looking for glucose and if your glycogen is storage is depleted your body is going to break down amino acids and convert it into sugar because the brain doesn't give a damn that you want to look aesthetic. The brain only cares about not dying, and it will break down your muscle to feed itself. Period. Can we possibly get these likes over 100? This smells funny. I'm trying to get the likes up so I can hit the YouTube algorithm because I keep saying stuff that goes against everybody's ideology. And to get people to my hum humble channel liking up the stream helps bring more traffic. So it's just to hit the X and collapse the window. And I've always said this to people, I can't see who's liking this stream. And even if I could, I don't have time. After the stream is over, I gotta work. So if you help like up the stream, I'm not gonna see who's liking up the stream. So don't feel like, you know, you're being like, 
you know, it, you're still, you will still be anonymous, but it'll help my channel. So we've got four more to get over a hundred and a hundred's a really good sweet spot to, uh, to bring more people to my channel. And I'm doing a lot of live streaming and you know, I watch other people oh, live stream. Oh. Okay. My car guy is telling me that after my, my car's been detailed that it's going to look good. So I just got a text, guys. Okay, but if you're fat adapted, then it will be burn fat first. No? So, J, what is it? J. Jack Hammer? The body isn't just constantly, like, I'm not just constantly burning all day or I turn into, like, a bag of bones. Um, what happens is, is it stabilizes your blood sugar and then stabilizes your insulin, which then stabilizes your fat storage, which then gives your body a chance to unflame itself and create more efficient fat cells through lipolysis. So um, you're gonna be like this, right? But you're able to um, access your lean mass more. You're able to access stubborn fat cells, which you couldn't before because the body doesn't wanna burn fat. Sorry, people, it just doesn't. There are vitamins in there? Yes, honey, there are vitamin D, A, K, all in the fatty bits of a person. But the human, the, the primal body doesn't realize that we eat garbage with like toxins in it. So now our fat is toxic. But so we're storing fat, we're, we're storing uh, not just subcutaneous fat, but we're storing visceral fat around the organs. And the body doesn't understand like, I don't need to be fat, there's food in the refrigerator, please stop storing. Those fat cells become inefficient. So you have to work on the whole body for keto to happen. So people are like, if you're fat about adapter, aren't you just constantly burning fat? Yeah, often you are, but sometimes you're not. Because sometimes your blood sugar is going to spike because you almost got into a car accident. That's going to spike your glucose really high, really high. And then maybe for a couple of days, your blood sugar is wonky. And you won't be burning fat in those days until your body, re until you get back into a homeostatic balance. Finally, we hit these hundred likes. Thank you, y'all. Dang. How do you build muscle on keto if insulin is low throughout the day? Well, the, th the point is, is that you, you guys got to understand ins insulin. You don't need a lot of insulin to grow muscle. You just need insulin that works. Okay. When you insulin resistant, the signal between the receptors and the pancreas, like when it's releasing insulin and it's not getting into the cell to be used, it doesn't matter if you have this much ins insulin, you're not going to grow big muscle if you're insulin resistant. You want to be insulin sensitive. That means dropping your insulin. I don't mean dangerously low because as long, we will always go into gluconeogenesis, right? As long as you're not hypoglycemic, lower insulin is going to work better. It's just, okay, these are very non-scientific terms, but your insulin is just at a better quality. It, it, the signal to get into the cell works. So therefore you don't need bolus amounts of insulin to take amino acids from what you eat into the muscle cell for it to grow. And that is why people go, this is the reason why you guys have seen me over the years. I'm 51 people. I'm full natty. Okay. I'm full natty. I am full natty and I am 51 and, and right and good on a keto diet, right? I'm good. Even though I've had knee injuries. So I'm a legs aren't bigger, bigger. I've had 10 surgeries, but I grow muscle, right? But is like solid, right? It don't jiggle. It's it's that's a solid booty. So and that comes from being ketotic, right? So if I if my insulin wasn't working, I would not. And I don't even need a lot of protein because I have really efficient, effective uh, pancreas and uh, insulin viability. If I say it in that context, my insulin's working. The signaling is working, and so I'm and so I don't need like stupid amounts of protein to grow muscle. It's fantastic. Can blue light contact at night raise cortisol? Absolutely. Like this all day, every day. Oh, that's the reason why I don't like to do night streams because I'm just, I'm blasting light on me so you guys can see me. And then it jacks up my sleep immediately. Okay, guys, it's, uh, we, we hit 107 people and I tried to get my streams to get over 100, but it took a minute to do that. I hope this stream helped you guys. Sorry for the bad quality. I am working on it with the 4G, 5G nonsense. Somebody's like, get away from the router. It's actually creating a problem. 
So I will try to stream in another part of my shoebox to see if the quality will improve. I have upgraded my uh, Wi-Fi three times and still have crappy streams with the quality. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, thank you so much. Was it Sayo Laser? Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, it's four to six hours of sleep. Yes, yeah, so you, you need to hit cycles, right? They're nine, here's one 90-minute cycle. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. So if you guys really want to heal the body, if your cycles, if you have less REM cycles, you have less repairage. That's the only time your body can repair is at night. So why shorten it? You know, you have to learn how to sleep deeper. And that's by having the right, you know, density, food density and getting off. I need to do a stream on supplements, the toxicity of supplements, folic acid, vitamin D. Oh, you guys are taking supplements to, to regulate your body. Calcium, another toxic one. You got B6, B, Bs, get it from real food. So you guys, if you want to actually fix the body and sleep better, you've got to have all of these nutrients. Because if you're nutrient deficient, your sleep is horrible. It's not just this TV and the cell phones and the stress and the bills and the light exposure. It's literally being deficient because a lot of you guys have low stomach acid and a lot of you guys are malabsorptive and you don't even know it. It's crazy, right? Crazy. Uh, yeah, please do. I will. I will. I just need to, Juan, I need to just really make sure I get my, my information really correct when I'm talking about the nutrient density in, um, and I'm not doing the vegan versus protein. I'm, that's just not my lane. But I want to talk about the nutrient density in your animal products and in your plants. And then I want to talk about being malabsorptive and having things like parasites. So you could try to address the candida and maybe drop your candida albicans, but you're not addressing the giardia, giardia, which is a common, unfortunately, parasite, and you still have the symptoms of you know brain fog and skin jacked and freaking infections everywhere. And that candida and that those parasites can mess you up. I'm not even kidding. It's no joke. Yeah, exactly. Supplements, medication, and fluoride. Fluoride, too, is another problem people don't talk about. Fluoride, it's fluoride, plastic bottles, the BPA, and um, medication. I'm not talking about that stuff. Like, the gut's trying to heal and it can't. Uh, need cons another, oh, you need another consultation. One. Oh, I had one with you. When did I have one with you? I don't remember. I've done a lot, you guys. And I know keto coaches and I think there's that girl, what her name, or Brittany Dawn or Brittany Davis. There's a big controversy with her because she's selling meal plants. I do sell meal plants. I'm actually adding a lot more of them onto my website. And I do have a keto course and all this stuff. This is what I do. I don't have a day job. This is what I do. But I've been coaching people for, I don't know, probably. I still, before I went on the internet, it was 10 out of the 11 years. So I've been doing this and thousands of people at this joint. Junkster? I've been doing it a long time. So you learn a lot, right? I'm an autodidact. I learn through osmosis. That's how I learn. I get my information from, I do a lot of research, but I really get my PhD from you guys. It's true. You can go to a doctor and they don't even talk to you. Their heads are down. They, they look at your chart. You're there for seven minutes and they send you out the door with pharmaceuticals. And, um, and I don't do that. I literally sit down in consultations and really talk to people. And because I've been around for so long, I know when people are not, I know when people leave out stuff. They're like, what time do you wake up? Okay, I wake up at seven. I'm like, okay, now the sun's already risen. That means that you wake up close to eight. I'm like, do you wake up close to eight? Well, yeah, but I try to wake up seven. And it's just like that, the conversations I have with people. I don't think she's a fan of the, the, being dingleberry and fungus. No. So dingleberry, I have nothing against him as a person. I'm using dingleberry because I'm being silly. And I'm saying dingleberry because, um, because it's, <laughs> because um, this person he could be a great person as an individual. Seems very calm, and very soothing, very polite, uh, well-natured and mannered person but the stuff he's selling is garbage. Sorry. Now, some of the stuff that he says has some merit. I'm not going to lie. But when you start jumping on the 
uh, keto and intermittent fasting, people are getting sick. And I get people who bought his supplements and done his protocol and have gotten sick. And they come to me like, I don't know what to do. Oh, thank you, Shala. It's been a while. Miss you, miss you, girl. Keep it. She said, keep it going, kiss, kiss, sis, sorry. <laughs> thank you, Shala. Shala, Shala, Jingleberry. And Fungus, um, he also has some things, but he doesn't talk about all the, the autoimmunity and the, and the, blood, the, the, the uh, blood sugar dysregulation. I mean, his studies are more geared towards obese people. I caught him contradicting himself in uh, in a interview, and I was done. I was like, "Bro, you just you just you just got found out, bruh. Like, you just contradicted yourself. Like, I'm not listening to you. You're trying to sell too much right now." And people get so motivated by the money. And don't forget, y'all. I could literally just do booty exercises because booty's right. It's like two two peaches, okay, for one peach. Um, I could do booty exercises. I could put myself in a bikini and just pump out, you know, my 90 day keto weight loss program. And I would be a rich bitch. Okay. I would be, but I can't do that. Ugh, how gross. Ugh. Thomas. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I say TD. I don't know him either, but all you gotta do is look at the nipples on a man. Mm -hmm. If they pointy. Okay. The guy who's fixing my car is constantly texting me, so I need to get off because I can't respond while I'm on the stream. Thank you, everyone. Just look at the nipples on men. If they're poofing or if they're like two little raisins poking out, they've been doing stuff. Okay? Just just look at the nipples. That's all you got to do. If they have little feminized nipples, that's how you know. No, no insanity. That's just a joke. Insanity. We, we don't... Child, that's, that's, from the, that's from the early 2000s. No, don't do insanity. All right, thank you, Deborah, for being my mod. I saw that you were on the mod, moderator, patrol, getting the freaking trolls. So thank you for slaying those trolls for me. I just saw you just blocking them. <laughs> Deborah has saved my butt on these streams. Of course, I'm way defen less defensive and way more um, calm because I know that she's not putting up with any nonsense. I'm telling you. So thank you everyone. Sorry for the long stream. I try to keep them 30 minutes because nobody wants to watch an hour stream of me looking at helicopters and all this nonsense. So love you. And I've got to go get an SD card, you guys, um, because I'm not able to film with my phone. I could film with my camera. Actually, my friend has my camera. I need it back because it's kind of expensive. Anyway. Bye, guys, and I'm out. Peace until next time. Thank you so much, Deborah.